Hey, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today for third Thursday. My name is Jessica Worthington. I am the director of the Office of Downtown Development, and we are so happy to have you all here. Um, with us, we have uh, from our team, Elizabeth Elliott with Teddy in the background. Father <laughs> Ted Miss. Father Ted Miss. Father Ted Miss. Um, we have Ellen Hill, Tess Harper, and Ebony is on here too, even though she's like not in my top ones for some reason, but I saw Ebony on here um, earlier, <laughs> Ebony Simpson. So we have the whole team here for um, for December and oh my gosh, guys, where did the year go? I don't know if y'all are like me, but I'm like excited for the holidays slash in denial that it's here. Um but welcome to Third Thursday. If this is your first time uh, joining us, this is something we do once a month, uh, every month, the Third Thursday, obviously. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to share updates, what's going on with the office, um, you know, updates, what's going on with partners, uh, as well as uh, just you know, sometimes we, uh, like in December, we like to share like, oh, what were your favorite successes from the year, you know, um, personal and professional. And again, just really kind of crowdsource some of what's happening um, across the state. I also noticed that we have a couple guests with us. I see Kathy Papa, who's one of our DCA regional reps. I'm trying to scroll down the list and see who else is here. Beth Evanson uh, with DCA. Give me a second. Oh, Jennifer Fordham is on the line too. Rebecca uh, from D from Region Eight. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Tina Hutchison from Region Seven. Woot woot. There uh, we Tanya. go. Tanya, Tanya, Region Six. Yeah. Oh, awesome! We got lots of DCA uh, folks on with us. So, um, if you guys haven't, uh, if you're new and you haven't uh, met your DCA regional rep, the way our agency works is that we have 12 regions across the state. Everybody is put into their own separate region, um, you know, compiled of multiple counties, multiple cities, and our agency has designated staff member that is you know your person on the ground living in that area and is a resource to help you so we always kind of um, consider them our first line of defense uh, for folks out there they have to be a little bit of subject matter experts on everything um, and I would say you know probably other than our office um, they're the other office that is you know, sporadic throughout the state and also travels as much as we do. So um, we're like, you know, kindred spirits. I always like to think of us uh, when it comes to like tag teaming stuff that's happening on the road. And um, for those of you who will be meeting with us in person for assessments this year, uh, hopefully you'll also get to meet your DC or the, your DCA regional rep will be there as well. Um, sometimes there's always scheduling conflicts that come up, um, but we love to have them uh, to be a resource in the room, a fly on the wall, and also, you know, an extra voice um, of reason and suggestions. So um, thank you all for joining us today as well. And I guess I'll just uh, kind of dive into everything that we've got going on, reminders and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, actually, no, usually we like to do welcomes to anybody new. Um, so if there's anybody new, it's your first time joining us and you want to say hi, introduce yourself, um, you can do a couple things. So you can throw up your hand, um, like physically, I may or may not see it because we've got multiple pages going on here but if you go down to the bottom of your screen there's a reactions thing you can like raise your hand and it'll pop you up to the top of the screen um or you can just come off mic uh, or off mute and introduce yourselves to us if if you're new if you just started want to say hi or just say hi in general daphne <laughs> were you just trying that out or <laughs> you're you're on mute <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm there, you go. there we go yes this I've is seen... just my first time being on the call oh, okay oh my gosh Daphne how is that even possible I know <laughs> you all know how that's possible yes we do we <laughs> <laughs> so for anybody who hasn't met you before Daphne introduce yourself um, my name is Daphne Walker. I live in Lyons, Georgia. Uh, if you don't know where that is, we are next door to Vidalia. Um, 
I've been in this position almost nine years now, come March. My goodness. And we just moved into our new office this year. Yay! So, yeehaw. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, Ellen, you see anybody else new on the call that you want to introduce? Oh, Omdi, do you have a new partner in crime? I sure do. This is Sammy, the other Sammy, not to be confused <laughs> with our city manager, Sammy. <laughs> she is our new marketing coordinator. This is your second, third, third week. week. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're an expert oh. by then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a seasoned veteran at this point. <laughs> Welcome, Sammy. We're glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I see Jim and Perry? Yeah. I was trying to figure out how to do the uh, the wave thing, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm in Jim Lay. I live in Perry, Georgia. I'm on the Perry Main Street Advisory Board, and awesome. um, I've been on it. Um, I'm guessing three or four years. I've I've lost track, and it's my and that first tends time. to happen after the first couple of years. It all just kind of blends together. <laughs> I'm retired, so um, this is something that I figured. Why not? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you. Thanks for joining us today. Right. Enjoy. I see Kim Hughes is on the call, but she may not want to get called out because her camera's not on. <laughs> see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you can always throw a little something into the chat too. Um, all right. So introductions um did that explained why we're all here quick reminders about annual assessments it is right around the corner um you don't have to complete it before christmas <laughs> but you do have to get it done after christmas um so all of uh everything is due by january 15th all the documentation your monthly reporting this is the exception where you don't wait till the end of the month to report it's due by january 15th and this year also the annual survey so again we're trying to knock that all out um, by uh, january 15th the other thing that you may have gotten last week is an email from national about their online platform giving you like your access and your um probably sent you a passcode and stuff like that. I want you to not worry about that until after the 15th. So um, we are just getting training on it. Um, we're still figuring our way through it, um, but we have till April basically to sort it out. So for us, that is not the priority right this minute. Um, the priority is just getting our traditional normal stuff done. And by doing that, it will make the rest of the process easier. And so um, we're planning kind of like for after January 15th, what our support for y'all will look like in that. Um, so my thing is like, don't worry about it. Put it out of your mind. Pretend like it doesn't exist for right now. And we've got several months to sort it out on the back end. Um, so just don't even let that, you know come into play this holiday season. Um, just focus on the normal stuff that you've been doing. Um, are there any questions in general about assessment stuff? Um, I know people are probably blowing up uh, Elizabeth and Ellen's phones and emails and stuff, but this is a good opportunity. If you've got a question, we're here. Let us, you know, answer it for you. I see Ginger waving her hand. What's going on, Ginger? Good morning. Good morning. So I'm doing my assessment and on this um assessment community assessment tools this right yep. here yep the last page does this automatically check boxes automatically at the end when you go and check the boxes in the beginning correct okay mm -hmm. all right yep it, uh, it should be tied so that anything you check in the beginning automatically gets checked at the end so you by the time you get to the end, it should already be done for you. Right. That's helpful. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't, did I check it and didn't know I checked? Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. I, I, we were just trying to keep it so you didn't have to flip back and forth a million times to, you know, record your stuff. So. Right. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That's great. 
Yep. And I did notice also that uh, you guys put in things like the MOU, that's for 2022, uh, 23 and 24. So that's already signed and done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I noticed that it was already put in for me. Yep. Five mm -hmm. box. Okay, yep. great. Great. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm good. Hey, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying to help you as much as possible. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. And as usual, if you have any questions about assessment or if you want us to kind of look into your Dropbox before the 15th, do it sooner rather than later with that request. We've already gotten several of those. And I, Ella and I have both looked kind of through people's Dropbox and let them know if it's like thumbs up or a few things that need attention. That is something that we're happy to do for you if you feel like you just want to make sure that you're 100% prepared. Since Dropbox is a little bit different, since the assessment tool is a little bit different, if that is something that you want us to do just let us know sooner rather than later once it's completed and we're happy to do that for you yeah and everybody is on our team taking time off around the holidays so we won't all be off at the same time but everybody will be off in general um so if you need something you know send it out to that general email address that main street at dca.ga.gov and that way whoever's in the office that day whoever's working can assist you or at least say hey They'll be back tomorrow. I can, you know, we'll, we'll talk then. Um, but just, you know, so that you don't have to keep like getting email bounce backs and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing I will say too, is if this is your first year doing it, you know, again, remember that it's our job to like help you through this process. So like, that's what we're here for. Also, um, if we start, you know, looking at it, um, your documentation, we see something's missing. It's not one of those like, oh, you're out, you, you forgot to upload a document. Like we will always reach out to you and be like, hey, did you realize this is missing or that this is, you know, gone or happening or something like that, you know? So we will give you every opportunity to like remedy the situation. Um, you know, we know it's a lot. We know that, you know, stuff gets missed and, you know, uh, balls get dropped accidentally, you know, so again, we will always reach out and have communication with y'all individually before anything official like takes place. Um, so, you know, our job is to, to, you know, our hope is to always keep you in compliance and just support y'all moving forward. So we, we never want to like have to move anybody down or out designations. So, <laughs> Um, you know, kind of take some comfort in that if you can. Um, the other thing too is while everybody should be up to date on monthly reporting, <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you are not, remember that they all are due um, by January 15th. And also keep in mind that is something that can get you knocked down a designation. So um, you know, again, don't want to have to do it, but, you know, we also need everybody to, to pull their weight and stay on top of stuff. I would say the majority of folks, 99.9% .9 are doing what they need to do. So only talking to a few folks here, but, um, thank you guys for all that you do. And the other thing that we do to say thank you in that regard is that we put together a cumulative impact report of your numbers. So you guys give us that info and, uh, we give it back to you in an annual report, um, that just really is taking the, the information that you're providing us throughout the year and putting it in one comprehensive document as a way of saying thank you. And then you can use that how you need to. So to help advocate for yourself, um, to share with counsel, to, you know, help promote the program. Um, I call this job security. You know, this is what we've done. This is what we're doing. People like to see the data. Um, all right, any questions about assessments before I move on to other topics? Okay. Um, next, if you weren't with us last month, we did introduce um, a new training that's coming in January. The uh, Clifton Strengths is a, an incredible kind of like personal assessment um, that focuses on the things that you do best. And I, our team has all been through this. Um, our, some of our team members have been through it multiple times, but um, we're working with Georgia EMC, Arana Reeves. Um, she's going to be coming in. This training will be held in Macon. I'm sure Ellen is going to drop something in the chat. 
uh, with the link for, but all our training stuff is up on our training calendar on our website registration is open for this. And so what again makes this different than other things that are out there. This is going to be very different than um, the John Maxwell's five levels of leadership that's really about. Um, partnerships and how you interact with others and how you can build those relationships. Clifton Strengths really focuses on you personally and the strengths that you bring to the table. Um, and so I think so often uh, in society, we're told that we need to focus on what we can do better and how we can improve ourselves and how we can grow and um, overcome the things that are hardest for us. But what Clifton Strengths does is it shows you the things that you are the best at and helps teach you how to lean into your strengths as well as leaning into other people's strengths. Um, so I will say it's a very fun day. There's you know, a lot of like these kind of takeaway aha moments that you'll have. And I always like to say that um, most of the stuff you'll be like, oh yeah, I knew that about myself, but it helps you understand the why behind it, right? So you may know that, you know, for me, competitive is like one of my, like my second strength. I know I'm a competitive person, like I get it, but it helps me understand like the lens at which I look at competitiveness and like why that kind of like is ingrained into the things I do and why I do them. Um, so again, I, I like to think of it as like the why behind stuff, um, the why behind your defaults. And I highly recommend doing it with uh, somebody else, either in your office or a board member or somebody you work with a lot, either at the city. Um, and the only reason for that is because it's really fun to do it with somebody else as well, um, to be able to um, share insights and get other information um, and just to be able to see how you working with the people that you interact with the most, how those kind of like takeaways can either, you know, help take y'all to the next level or how you can kind of maximize that impact. So Ellen has dropped the registration link uh, into the chat. Again, uh, this will be in Macon at the end of January. Um, it's a one day, an in and out kind of quick thing, um, but it will be a lot of fun. I'll tell you, it's like one of, you know, the favorite things that we've done as a team and we've done it a couple times um and it's just again i think it's a little bit different than some of the other trainings we you know we'll do throughout the year but it, it's going to be a good one um ellen what am i missing i think that's the whole list okay <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I got through the whole list in 20 minutes. That's, yeah, that's a wrap for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we usually like to take time at the end of the year and talk about personal and professional successes, have people share with us the things that they're most um, excited about in the new year coming or the thing that they're most proud that they've accomplished this year, both professionally or personally, um, is I, before we do that though, I just, I saw Jason and I had this realization that GDA, um, sometimes if there's somebody on the line from GDA, we can do it like kind of a GDA update from the Georgia downtown association. And Jason, since I know you just recently spoke, um, at a legislative committee meeting. I'm gonna tag you in if that's okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Um, hey everybody, uh, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, all the things. Um, so yeah, recently uh, Taylor Smith and I went down to uh, the state capitol and got to testify in front of the uh, Rural Development Commission. Uh, they're making recommendations, uh, their recommendations for the upcoming up, uh, legislative session. And we advocated on behalf of the rule zone program. Um, so for those of you who are in the rule zone, you know, it's a good program. Um, it can be a great program, uh, but the um, it's set to uh, sunset uh, here in 2026. And um, uh, we want to make sure that that gets extended um, because, it, you know, as a downtown development authority, we don't necessarily have a whole bunch of tools in our tool belt um, to offer 
incentives why you know if you're an industrial uh recruiter you can you can do all of these things you can you know you can waive impact fees and tax fees and there's uh tax incentives and all of this the rule zone is a great tax incentive and um i mean selfishly we're about to expire but we kind of have more work to do so we've been trying to like lobby to like fix the program where you know if you've met certain metrics you can stay in the program or reapply but we also wanted to lobby for um the map so when you start in the rule zone you have to draw a map and, and it's a bit of a guess i mean it's an educated guess but you're kind of saying this is the area we want to focus on revitalizing but for us uh the market uh you know we kind of boomed in our revitalization efforts through the rule zone and we literally hit the edge of the map and across the street people wanted to buy like three buildings and revitalize them and they wanted to use the tax credits and i had to say i'm sorry we you're not eligible for that. So we just wanted to advocate for some flexibility in our map so that we can go where the market is. Uh, we also recommended, um, you know, uh, most of our downtowns as you drive through have these historic homes that are either in the downtown or adjacent to the downtown. And the state's been working on housing um, so much. You know, I felt like, you know, the rule zone, yet yeah, these houses don't necessarily create jobs but they're expensive to revitalize. Um, it's great to save this historic property. That's kind of our mandate and the state's mandate is historic preservation. So, you know, we kind of added the request that, um, you know, if there is a historic property in your downtown, in your historic district, that that should be able to qualify for the investment revitalization portion of those credits. Cause those people are just gonna go downtown and shop, you know, they're not gonna go some other place. Um, so it's still contributing to kind of the downtown revitalization. So um, it, it was well received. Uh, it helped going right before lunch. We didn't get bombarded with a bunch of questions, <laughs> but um, it was uh, it was a good day. I really uh, appreciated the opportunity to do that. So we'll see what comes of it. And Jason, are y'all doing a downtown day at the Capitol again? Are y'all bringing that back? We're Did talking about it. Yeah. So just on the Georgia City's day. Okay. Um, we're, we're hoping to get, you know, a handful of folks to go down there and participate with GMA um, for, you know, lobbying on behalf of our downtown, because I think that's that's one of the things that we've talked about a lot lately is if you think of the collective job uh, and economic development that that happens in our downtown as a singular unit, it, it's as robust as any industrial partner that you might bring in uh, to the community. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something that's, um, you know, I hear a lot that, uh, everyone's so excited and proud of our downtowns and they're so important. Well, I want the state legislature to, to support us, um, as best they can, um, you know, in this upcoming legislation. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I yeah. know that, um, advocacy is a huge component of the Georgia downtown association. Um, is there anything that our network here can do to support y'all in this process or any recommendations going into the new legislative cycle what do you what do you think we do have a rat card although i don't i don't know, think i have it accessible we can probably get that out if it hasn't already gone out that is um designed to kind of talk about those bullet points for advocacy so okay. maybe just call your state legislature or, or your local leg you know representative and uh senator and make sure they get a hold of that and get that in their hands talk to them about what's going on in your downtown and, um, you know, mention the rule zone specifically, because if you're not a, a, a rule zone member yet, or you're wondering how to apply, I, I'm, first of all, I'm happy to help you with that, but they should know about it. They should be able to help you understand what it is. And the more they hear about it, the more they'll uh, support its renewal. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. <laughs> And it looks like April uh, from Thomasville just dropped in to uh, the chat, uh, a website, uh, or part of their website that focuses on the legislative stuff. So if y'all want to check that out, I would highly recommend doing so. Thank you for sharing that with us, Jason. Um, okay. 
Any other updates from partners or any of the regional reps have anything they want to share with us before we move on? Okay. All right. So now we get to talk about all the great things that have happened this year. Um, and I just want to hear from you guys, like what good stuff happened personally, professionally. I'm actually going to start with Lauren Singleton because I'm going to let her kick us off because I know she's got some great stuff because she shared it with me and I was so proud of her that I'm going to make her share it with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and how did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> um, well, I have, I have a couple of things and one, uh, I don't think even you know about Jessica because I haven't uh, really shared that information yet. But um, the couple of things that uh, Jessica's talking about is one, um, I recently got my leadership in place management credentials from the International Downtown Association. Right. Um, so uh, if you're interested in doing that, it was actually kind of easy. It was just an exam, a um, hundred questions, uh, multiple choice. Um, so it was very, pretty easy, but um, it's the credentials are good for three years. So um, very did you have proud to of that. Like, in regards to that, did you feel like you had to really study for it? Or do you feel like just your on the job knowledge and expertise like prepared you for it? It was totally on the job expertise. There, okay. um, there was no type of study guide okay. uh, or outline of any kind. And I even asked, I, I emailed the IDA and I was like, uh, how, how do I study for this? They were like, there, there's really no study guide. And they sent me a link to a bunch of webinars to watch. And I'm like, I don't have time to watch all these webinars. So um, yeah, it was pretty much on the job training. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I have been accepted into graduate school to get my master's in strategic leadership development. And I know Jessica is super excited about that because um, I know how much she's into leadership. But um, I'll be starting that program in just a couple of weeks. Woohoo! I love it. Love and it. then uh, the one last thing that uh, I don't know if Jessica even knows about is that downtown Eatonton will be getting a hotel very soon. I did not know that. Yes. It is. And all I was thinking, as long as you're not telling me you're leaving today. That'll oh, be no, no, we're not going through <laughs> that again. Um, <laughs> No, it is uh, an $11 million project. Um, they're going to be renovating the old Eatonton Hotel that was built in the 1920s. Yeah. Um, a company out of Boston has actually bought the property and they're going to renovate it and add on some rooms. It'll be about 55 rooms. It'll have a rooftop bar and a restaurant and some retail space. And their plan is to be done in January of 2025. So um, we're definitely looking forward to that. That's incredible. Will it be under like any like hotel flags or is it? Right now it'll just be um, under this company's flag because they do a lot of hotels across the United States. They just finished okay. one in Atlanta and one in Washington, D.C. So um, no, it'll, they will, they bought it, they're renovating it and they will run it. Wow. That is incredible. That's, yes. I mean, I know the property you're talking about, so that's, mm -hmm. that is really awesome. Yes. So exciting. Congrats. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw Tanya under the bus because I think she had some good news recently. That's how multiple we work. If you don't know, volunteer, we just volunteer you. Yeah, <laughs> actually multiple good news is. Um... <laughs> all in told. Um, well, a couple of cool things. So um, May made five years that I was in this position and uh, finally got some part-time help this year mm -hmm. and really excited to say that now she is going to become full-time help because um, I am taking on our DDA as well. And so, and we both got a raise. <laughs> Yay. Finally. Love it. So good stuff. Love it. Love it. And we got rural zone starting January 1. <laughs> you got all the things coming, all don't you? Things. All yeah. the things. 
<laughs> and actually we've already uh it's been really interesting because we haven't even started like hyping that up but i've already had like three serious meetings with investors um about possible projects so we're really excited about that oh my gosh so exciting <laughs> karen what you got going on um, I just um, wanted to brag a little bit about our downtown. Uh, we've had five restaurants to open this year. Wow. Um, Uncle wow. Bill's Pizza, the Palace, which used to be our theater and, and was an eyesore for like 30 years. Y'all need to come to that. It's very um, kind of upscale, but really good prices. It's quite the experience to go there. Um, we got a little sandwich shop called Sweet Caroline's, a new Mexican restaurant, Los Amigos, and a... Um, a seafood restaurant called Fish Hooks, and then um, three of our really bad-looking stores downtown that's been an eyesore for many, many years. Three of those have sold, and we've gotten two other buildings downtown, the poly Party Parlor and the Brokerage has opened this year. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> that is huge. <laughs> huge, huge, huge. And I don't know how to take my uh, my hand down. <laughs> oh, I can lower it for you. Okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Who else has got something to share? Oh, I see you, Alyssa. All right. <laughs> I think she's probably trying to figure out how to unmute. Hey, there we go. Can you hear me now? Sorry yeah. about that. We've got a, got a couple good things going down in our downtown. You know, our downtown has a railroad track going through it, so it's a little difficult to do some things. But we have a property owner who is, well, he inherited the buildings through an estate, and it's three old buildings together that have been an eyesore in downtown Villarica the next, last two or three years. Well, with persuasion, we and trying to get him to sell it. He's decided to keep it, but is on board to renovate one of the buildings and he's applied for facade and grants with us. We're on board to fund those and it's got his permits in place. And he's gonna be re starting with one building, redoing it and hoping to bring a restaurant in it which is next to a park that we were bringing life to part of our placemaking plan. Mm -hmm. And right down the road from him is a piece of property where the owner has got all his permits in from the city and is gonna add a eating um, court, which is made up of shipping containers. Nice. Neat design that we've never had in Villa Rica. And then we've got another spot that the city's actually working on. It was an old gas station that the city finally tore down. It's going to be a temporary structure too, built on a, a deck because it is close to a railroad crossing that the city's working with the railroad track and GDOT to try to reroute the traffic that way. And that place could be potentially a coffee shop or a small cafe. They have a deck up front with tables and chairs. So just the three of those, if we can get those in, it's going to change our downtown because we've got a lot of development and construction going on around us. It's going to take our population from 19,000 to like over 30,000 the next three or four years. So we're right off the I-20, about 30 miles front west of Atlanta. So we've got a lot of growth, a lot of potential downtown so I'm really excited about that yeah. is one of those properties Miss Jane's yes <laughs> yes I've been begging him to sell that property ever since I got this job but oh it's, man it's that ended up itself in the victory I'm so and, excited for y'all <laughs> yes it's gonna have a porch on the back and oh man yeah we finally got him to do something so yeah, so he's got all this facade grant information to me. So we're, well, it's really exciting. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. 
I remember when Villa Rica was under 5,000 in population. I too, because I grew up here. <laughs> <laughs> the population explosion with a new subdivision that's technically in Douglas County, but now it's coming again. So uh, I was able, just one more thing, able to get the uh, council to approve new Christmas decorations this year. So they are in place, going to add more next year. That was a huge expense, but had a lot of compliments from residents because of that, because we, we are on a train we have a railroad, we have a big welcome train Christmas set in the middle of the train park that says welcome to Villa Rick and new Christmas tree. And it's just, it's a, got a lot of compliments from it. So I was very proud of that task. Yes. Oh, love it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. April, what's going on with you? I just wanted to give an update on the holiday loyalty card that we presented at one yeah. of the third Thursdays. Yeah. So that was this year's and it's still going through December 31st, yeah. but we did hit a record breaking for this holiday season so far already. So um, I checked this morning and we've had $229,000 turned in from these holiday loyalty cards and we still have six locations downtown that are accepting those so those are just the ones that have been turned into our visitor center so yeah. that's insane um so that means there's like right at 1200 cards turned into us which oh. is super cool um so they still got what 10 days to shop <laughs> to add to that um, but in addition to that, um, I know y'all know we do like the downtown dollars. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to tell you, in since our Christmas in Thomasville season started, which was November 19th, we've sold $151,000 in downtown dollars. Holy. And God. over 50 of that has been in the last 20 days. So I just love that there's so much support for small business. That's incredible. That is huge. Congratulations. Really looking forward to having all of you come to Thomasville next year. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep following South Life to see the updates on the building uh, that they're working on. So every saw, day there's changes. I know. And I saw they just painted, they were painting on the outside the other day. And oh, just, they, they took the random ladder down. <laughs> it's nice <laughs> awesome thank you so much for sharing april yes, thank you <laughs> yep all right fernanda what's going on in pembroke all right so it was my first time running the christmas parade market it was the 40th annual parade for uh christmas parade here in pembroke it How'd went it pretty well we have an okay. estimated a little over 40 uh yeah, 4,000 people here, which for a town of under 3,000 is huge. Yeah. Um, the DD Day through the city got awarded a grant through Georgia Humanities to do an update and digitization of our downtown walking tour, which mm -hmm. we're really excited about. We have an intern helping us, which is very exciting. Um, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. You survived your first Christmas holiday market parade thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bigger accomplishment than you know. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right, Shelly, what's going on? Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about our mistletoe market that we had for Christmas. Um, December 9th, we did that. And um, I decided to make it really big this year <laughs> and take it. Um, it used to be just one block in our main street. And this year we did it um, over two blocks. And there was also a train going through the middle of it. So um, that was a fun feat. But um I'm very happy to say that it was amazing. Um, all of my vendors were just 
as a train goes by right now. <laughs> you may be able to hear it, but um, all of my vendors, I didn't have one vendor who wasn't happy with um, the, at least like the planning of it and the layout of it. Um, last year it was really cramped. So everybody was really happy about that. Um, we got a little kitty train running through it. And so it was just lots of really fun stuff, local entertainment all day. Um, and I'll be honest, like I was very, I was, I wasn't nervous that it wasn't going to go well. I was like, okay, are they going to be happy? And that's my biggest thing is like making vendors happy because to me, that's how we have more businesses open in town because all of ours were craft vendors. Um, so yeah, that was amazing. I'm I'm glad it's over with, but um, I'm definitely glad it happened. I've had a lot of people kind of give us feedback about it and they're just, they were like, don't change anything. And I'm like, we will, we're going to change things because I saw things, but I'm glad that they said that. Um, besides that, our mural is our new mural that we did with Georgia Council for the Arts, um, it is complete, but it's not complete. We have one final little piece to that puzzle that's going to be added, and it will be placed onto the mural on um, January 5th. And so everyone here, by the way, is invited to that if you would like to come down to Cairo um, January 5th. It's going to be from 6 to 9 p.m. It's going to be a nice small affair with food trucks. Um, we really just want everybody to um, meet our artists and just see this really great thing. There's also an Elvis concert going on at the Zebulon at that time. So it'll be a really fun night in Cairo. Um, more than that, I'm just going to say a personal Yay is I've been in this position since July. Um, before that, I was with the city, but I wasn't in this position. And I will say I'm finally now feeling comfortable in this position. Um, and I think that that is a milestone to celebrate for folks like us who are in these roles. Um, it does take a while to get your, like, I guess, get your sea legs. Um, and it's, it's a really nice feeling and it definitely makes the job a lot easier when you can just breathe around like all the things that are going on. Um, so I just want to give everybody grace and, um, hope that you all feel that way. And if you don't yet, just know you will soon. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks y'all and Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Yeah. Thank you. Shelly, I appreciate you sharing that. And I agree. I think that, um, you know, we always tell people it does get easier the longer you do it. It's just when you're in it, it can feel like so, so much, you know. Um, but the reality is, you know, once you've been through some of these things, you develop your own processes, your own procedures, your own way of doing things. You look at how you can tweak it and make it better. And, and you know, it does really, you know, you get to put more ownership on it versus feeling like, you're just doing what you inherited. Um, and so, oh, I love you saying that because we're happy to have you. <laughs> we don't want you going anywhere. Um, but yeah, for everybody else who, who's on the call and feeling overwhelmed, no, it does. It does get better. It does get easier. <laughs> Thank you. Ellen, I want to call you out. Did, um, did your son have any exciting news that you would like to share? <laughs> well, we're still deciding, however, yes. so yes. he's a senior this year and we're applying to colleges and he did get into the University of Alabama. So we were excited that that was his first uh, college acceptance letter. He wants to go to Georgia. So I know they're, they're rival schools, but we're working on that application too. So he'll have several options, I'm sure, but we're, we were just proud of him. He's going off to do bigger and better things, which breaks my mama's heart, but we're proud of him. So yeah. Love it. Love it. Uh I'm a University of Alabama fan, but um, <laughs> I was actually born in Alabama. I know y'all probably don't know that about me, but um, I'm like roll tide. So <laughs> what part of Alabama, Jessica? Enterprise. Okay. I was born in Mobile. Oh, love it. Okay. Yep. My parents always like to say UCLA, upper corner of lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a lot of thumbs down when I said Alabama, huh. so I <laughs> love y'all too. <laughs> Who else 
else has got something they want to share? Personal, professional, anything. Ah, Leanne. Oh, I was like, where'd she go? <laughs> you're muted. You're muted. Okay, there Hello, we go. Hello, everybody. So I don't know um, if you guys have heard, but I'm actually going to be leaving this job in January. So just wanted to um, I know, tell right? you guys That's what an amazing um, <laughs> journey it's been. And all of you are so um, precious and dear to me. And um, it has been wonderful. And I love you all. And it's um, the most rewarding job. And it's the hardest working bunch of people that uh, we will ever meet. And so thank you for all of your friendships and your love and support for 10 years. And I will be your biggest cheerleader from now on. And hopefully you won't be getting rid of me. Don't kick me out of the groups. Um, and hopefully I can make my way back to see you guys at conference. Um, I'm going into the private se sector with an engineering firm. Um, so we'll be working with clients and maybe hopefully some of your communities um, in the future. But I have loved every second of working with you guys and meeting you all and just will just be your biggest cheerleader and send my best wishes and continued support to all of you. So thank you for all that you've meant to me and done for me for these last 10 years. I love you. Oh, we love you too. <laughs> Once you're in the major world, you're always in it. I'm, I'm right? in. Don't kick me out. I'm not I know. Gonna... I was going to say, we don't let you go very far. <laughs> Omni knows that from um, <laughs> firsthand. We don't ever let you go very far when you leave. So. <laughs> anyway. we like to Merry Christmas, around. everyone. Thank you. And again, um, I'll always be biggest cheerleaders for what you guys are doing. So thank you, Leanne. We, you will be missed, but we're always happy, you know, if you're happy. So that's all that matters. <laughs> um, let's see. Anybody else have something they want to share? Elizabeth, what are you grateful for this year? Me? Yes. <laughs> um, I you put me on the spot. I was like, but you're my type of positivity girl. So whenever I'm like, this is the worst, Elizabeth's like, Don't. this is the yeah. good side of it. So <laughs> um, I'm grateful that with every door that closes, a window opens. And so even if you look like, if you think you're in, <laughs> they're like laughing at me. They're like, of course. Um, <laughs> um, because even if it seems like you're in a dark time and things have been a little bit of a struggle. Like what, once you're through some of the battle, you're able to see some of the things that like the benefits on the other side. And, um, you're never without hope. You get, you survive a hundred percent of your hardest days and, uh, and the people around you, um, they're the one, like the people that, you know, hold you up in those times. It really shows you who, um, the love that surrounds you that you may not have been realizing. So, yeah. Preach it, Elizabeth. Preach. <laughs> right? Like, take us to the mountain. I mean. <laughs> um, so I'm grateful for all of you. Um, I'm grateful for this community. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what 2024 brings. Um, Daphne, you said you wanted to, to share something. You are on mute. So unmute yourself first. <laughs> okay. Well, I mentioned earlier that we had moved into our new building, so I wanted uh -huh. to share, oops, picture, or see if you can tell, may not with this filter. Oh, yeah. And we also have a new logo, which has very cool. been very, had a lot of good comments. Oh. Is that backwards when you guys see it? It is, isn't it? No, no, we see it right. It says lines. Okay. So I can right. read lines. I'm reading, it's backwards to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're also, we'll be um, working with the Community Heart and Soul program this year. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome. That was my two babies. Thank you. Andy, what's going on? I are you, Do you have Christmas earrings on? Because I kind of love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Being all festive and stuff. And my shirt says, the world's tallest elf. <laughs> 
Um, so my girls are making me, uh, raise my hand to tell you guys, we really like, it's been a very weird year here in Rome and we did our annual awards program last week and we were all just kind of staring at each other. Like, do we have, did we accomplish anything this year? And so we started putting pen to paper and realized we really have had an incredible year. We, we've had a lot of record breaking statistics this year in terms of like largest events. We've had record breaking real estate sales. One of our properties sold this year for $3.3 million. We like cannot even believe it. Um, and most exciting, I think for us, we rehabbed and moved into our new office space. So I know several people are coming to do presentations in Rome in February. So we're excited to show that off. Um, so you guys can see um I'm excited. we've had a lot of really cool things we did a new um doing business downtown certification is one of the things that we're probably most proud of for our local realtors here um in floyd county so that was a huge success and they've been asking us to do that again so we'll probably do that at in the first of 2024 and then what'd you say oh yeah the photo booth that we installed earlier this year as a fundraiser, we've made over $8,000 on that. We just, we really have had a good year. So if you feel like you haven't ha gotten to accomplish anything, start making a list and you probably surprise yourself. Um, but on a personal note, I'm wrapping up my, um, wrapping up grad school. This is my last semester, thank the Lord. Um, so I'll be graduating in May. And if you've been thinking about it, I feel like this is your sign because I started when my son was two years old and I strongly believe if I can do it, anyone can do it. So believe in yourself. I'm with you, girl. This is my last semester too. So Yay. I'm like, oh my gosh, we'll have to go out to celebrate afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> we'll throw a graduation party. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> The, oh my gosh, thank God it's done. <laughs> thank God it's done. <laughs> Love it. What is this? Um, I know you'll tell us at our annual lesson and stuff, but the certification, the doing business certification. Talk to me about that. So it was born out of, um, kind of out of our frustration, if we're being totally honest, but yeah. it came from our just conversations that we were having with our business development committee and uh, I'm sure you all probably experienced this in your downtowns too, but people will sign a lease or they will buy a building and have no clue what they're getting themselves into. And so we really did it to educate our realtors. But if anything, our hope and goal was to just open those lines of communication. And so we were asking, we create a little packets for them and we were asking them to make sure that their clients are aware of historic design guidelines. You know, we have parking ordinances here in Rome like please don't let these people find out after they've signed the bottom line and yeah. our we were shocked at how um little our realtors knew about doing business downtown and so it just it was great it was a huge success and it's something that we'll continue to do as long as you know there's a need for it so that's really cool I love that awesome thank you for sharing All right, we've got like five minutes left. So one more share. Who's got one more? I'm looking at you, Bethany. I know you got something going on or something to share. I, I've waited this long to call on you, okay? Just for the record. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, um, I copied in, um, I uh, on the last call we did a, I think I told you guys about our shop small Christmas crawl that we did this year. It went from no November 18th to December 18th. And of the cards that we had turned in in little old Blackshire, Georgia, we had over $43,000 worth of cards turned in. And, and what's your population again, Bethany? Um, uh, 3,000. Yeah. So um, anyway, it was a huge success <laughs> and people loved it. And people were still turning in cards yesterday and we'd already given away the packages. So um, anyway, <laughs> um, but if you didn't know, the entire town of Blackshear in Pierce County, Georgia, descended upon the Mercedes Benz last Tuesday. Descended. If you wanted to rob a bank in Blackshear, if you wanted to do donuts on Main Street, <laughs> you could have done, done it. <laughs> you could have done it. But we won the state championship. Yeah, um, and did. our boys came home to one of our local businesses shot off $1,800 worth of fireworks, like at the high school, which was very cool. 
Wow. Um, hold on. I see. I wrote it down because I knew you were going to call on me. I know. I know. You know. <laughs> um, okay. So that we've had two new restaurants and four new businesses open. Um, we did we redid all of our park lights, and so we're kind of Jekyll esque now. Just saying. Um, and one lady, one girl from Public Works, got in the bucket truck and did it all herself. She's about to get a massage, just saying. Um, but our Christmas parade was the biggest, the largest and the longest. And we had our Christmas parade wrapped back around into our park and had a tree lighting ceremony and had food trucks. And so the food trucks ran out of food and it was a huge success and people loved it. So um, that, and then of course our veterans banners, which are by far my biggest thing that we've ever done. And I threatened to have people come get them this year and uh, it was revolt it was a complete revolt they're like no you can't do not do this so anyway um but that's a I mean oh and I just had daughter number two graduate from the University of Mississippi so two down two to go so, Whoa, that's amazing. so I just got a raise too <laughs> yeah <laughs> Love it. So anyway, but Love Merry it. Christmas, you guys. This is such a fun group. Leanne, I'm going to miss you, but you still get to, I still call you. Um, but it's just a fun, fun, fun time. I can't believe I've been in this position almost seven years and it's crazy. So um, I love all my people and I can't wait to go to Thomasville and where are we supposed to go for national in Alabama? Oh, Birmingham. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. There's really good food in Birmingham. So anyway. <laughs> But you guys We're, have a great new year and enjoy all your families and everything and eat all the foods and do all the things. Yes. I feel like Bethany, I could not have said it better. Like happy holidays, everybody, regardless of what you celebrate, we appreciate all that y'all do. Um, love, you know, that while you know, the world has kind of returned to normal from COVID that we're still doing these, it's a great opportunity to get together. And I always love hearing, you know, the personal and professional like successes um, that we get to share with each other. So I appreciate each and every one of you and everything that you're doing. Make sure you take time for yourself this holiday season, take a break. Honestly, I know assessment stuff is important, but it can wait till after the first, like just enjoy the holiday season and we'll get it all sorted out when we come back. Like it'll be fine. It will be, I promise. So Thank you all for everything that you do. And we'll stick around for a couple of minutes, the team, in case you want to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one. but uh, happy holidays, y'all. And we'll see you back here in January.